Looking for a way to get healthy? The Chef You and I program has the answer. Catherine Raker and chefs from around the nation will teach even the most inexperienced how to cook. Come into their kitchen and watch them take ordinary foods with loads of calories and fat and turn those foods into healthier dishes. You will be the first to get tips and ideas on foods that are easy to prepare. Now let's join Catherine and today's chef and learn how to make today's recipes. Hi, this is Katherine Rager of Katherine Rager's World and the Chef You and I. We are here at the McCormick Center in Chicago, Illinois, on location, and we are in one of the halls where this wonderful company, Barry Calibut, is with Jerry Hagedorn and your Ooh. director of marketing. Director of marketing, Laura Bergen. Laura Bergen. So Actually, Jerry, we're going to talk about the history of the company. Sure. And then Laura's going to talk about the chocolate and all the things that she that you do. Perfect. Right? Yep. Okay. And then I'm going to get to do something with your chef. Yes. That's really chef cool. Chef Vianney is back here. She's waiting for you. I can't wait. And, uh, I can't wait. I want to get my hands in. There Jerry, you go. Right. We're, right. We're going to get your hands in some ruby. And, and right. And ruby. Laura's going to tell you all about ruby. But first, a little bit about the the company, Barry Calibut is the world's largest chocolate manufacturer. We make two million metric tons of chocolate a year from 60 factories in 31 countries. We, wow. we grind uh, just at about 25% of the worldwide crop of cocoa. So the rule of thumb is one out of every four pieces of chocolate in the world, in the world has our product inside. Wow, wow. Yeah. and I have to tell you, it's absolutely delicious. Well, thank you very um, much. You can tell um, if you're living overseas and trying Belgian chocolate, yeah. I mean, there's nobody that can beat French or, to or, or Belgian chocolate, right. that's so, for sure. So we're mainly business to business, so all the, all the companies you saw across the hall, we ship them liquid tanker trucks of chocolate at a time into their manufacturing facilities or a one-ton super sacks of chips and chunks into a baking operation. So wow. we're, we're mainly business to business in that regard, but then we also have our food service brands that we sell into white tablecloth restaurants. Right, and you do food service also. Yeah. Do you do other food service? Uh, you know, like a lot of big companies today are now doing food service in their in their in their places. Do you do that as well, or we, just white tablecloth? Uh, no, no, we do all all sorts of food service. So we're in the whole uh, complete hotel restaurant catering supply. We have a decorative cup company called Mona Lisa. Mm. We have uh, uh, an almond company, American Almond, we bought a few years ago. And so we, we have a wide range of, uh, of products that we can sell into uh, the professional chef uh, environment. Right. right. And being a chef, it's important to have it, the right product. you got to have right. the right product, got to have the quality product. Right, because if you don't, you can really taste it. Yeah. I know, I That's can. Right. So anyhow, um, actually, where can people find you before you hand the mic over you can find us pretty much every, anywhere but uh, our headquarters are here in Chicago uh, we've been here for the headquarters have been here for about 12 years uh, but like I said we have 60 factories all around the world uh, you can find us no matter where you, where you need it from a food service perspective we're in all of the large uh, food service distributors so uh, uh, so a Cisco a US food service European imports those kinds of things you'll find us there as well I can't thank you enough for thank giving me much. the history that's yeah, awesome Thanks. and you're gonna turn it over to I'm Laura turn now. it over to Laura Bergen who's in a heads up our marketing and she's uh, she's the point person on Ruby chocolate and she's gonna tell you all about Ruby chocolate all right and thank you so okay. very much perfect thank you Jerry hi Laura tell Hello. me you know I had a taste of your Ruby chocolate and I have to tell you it just melts in your mouth. It's delicious. So I love the color. And can you tell me how you developed Ruby? Absolutely, yes. We're very proud of Ruby. Uh, it is the fourth type of chocolate globally, and that is what we have launched starting in September of 2017. I actually launched it in Shanghai. In Shanghai. Are you still yes. live in Singapore? Yes, yes. So that, that's where we made our world debut. In Singapore? In Sing in, oh. Well, in Shanghai, in Shanghai, actually, is where we did that back again, 2017. Um, so we're very excited. Since then, we've had global launches in Asia right. to right. Europe. And now, last year, we are launching it, as of this week, into the U.S. and Canadian markets. Yeah, that's great, because it's really a tremendous product. Well, we're, we're so glad that you like it. Thank uh, you. We term Ruby that it is a tango or a combination 
a berry fruitiness from a flavor perspective, mm -hmm. and then combined with the luscious smoothness. So the very luscious texture, which you already mentioned, and how it melts in your very mouth. Very smooth, very creamy. Yes, That's very much. That's the way I, you know, when it, when I got it, you know, because uh, my friend brought it over to me, he said, you have to taste this right now. And I tasted it, and it was just so delicious. I, I wanted more. And well, that's, great. That's We're hoping you're not alone. We hope a lot of consumers that, I think so too. want more. Right. And so you're going to sell it cons to consumers in retail stores? So no. What we will do, again, is we're a B2B manufacturer. Yes. We will actually sell it direct to other food manufacturers right. we'll, that will then take our ruby and then bring it forward in their products and their creations. Can, that we, then look we'll go to consumers. Can we look at it over here, please? Absolutely. Right here you see. Here it is. is this is the product uh, in an easy melt wafer of how we sell it out direct right. to food right. companies or through distri distribution, as Jerry mentioned. Right. And and then here, what we do here at the show is we actually make our chef, chefs here make in creations of how our customers would possibly use Ruby right. to give inspirational ideas from a culinary perspective and, again, how they could bring it forward. Right. So right. Ruby's actually coming from a certain variety of cocoa bean. Okay. And we combine that with our unique processing. Mm -hmm. And that together is where you get the result of the ruby color and flavor oh, and no color and flavor added. So no this is color no, and flavor added. Not at all. This that's is wonderful. all from a, a certain type of bean and then combined with our unique processing. And that's the result you see right. here. And yes. I think that's what's driving a lot of the excitement is it really is a new and a unique type of chocolate. Right. Because if you don't have to add additives or flavoring nope. or anything like that, then you've got a product that's pure yes. and natural. Yes. And right? I think that's the excitement is it really is a chocolate. Um, today, it's not defined via the FDA as a chocolate. So we're in working in partnership with the FDA is it doesn't today fit exactly that definition, the current definitions. Okay. But for all said purposes, the ingredients right. involved are chocolate. Right. And so we're going to go over yes. and meet the chef and Very see good. what you're yes. doing. Let's do that. Let's go show you some of the creations okay. here. We're going to see the creations. Yes. Now you want to come in here. We'll get you in. So it might be easier to get you Let's, behind so we can you get behind. you a good visual. So this is Chef Gabrielle. Hi, Chef. How are you? I'm a chef as well. Oh, nice and we have a chef show. But you're going to use macaroons. You're going to use macaroons to do this. And you're going to show me how to do it, and then I want to do one. Absolutely. How, how about that? Sure. So what I do, of course, i got to make sure that the ruby is nice and smooth before I dip the macaroon in. We don't want too many air bubbles. Then we'll drop it in, and I'm left-handed, so I do it with my left hand here. And then uh, you don't want to have a big foot around the bottom with chocolate pooling, so you have to kind of string it off a little bit like this, and then bring it on over here, let it slide off the fork, and then you put the pistachios on it. Pistachios, yes. And if you like a little bit of gold leaf for some flair. Oh, wow. So gold leaf is a nice little additional added touch on there. And there we go, a beautiful macaroon. Would you like to try? I'm going to try it. You're going to hold the, one of you can hold it for me. Okay. Let me just clean your fork off really quick so we have good luck here. Okay, I've never had good luck with chocolate, actually. <laughs> here you go. All right. So I take the macaroon onto... The fork? Uh, no, you actually just drop it on in there. Drop it on. Take this mic and sure. Do I use the Do I do the spatula on um, here? You can, but if you like, yep, you can do that, and then you can flip it over with the fork. Okay, let's flip it over with a fork, like this, because I'm right-handed. There you go. And then flip it over. You can do that, and then you'll pick it up underneath and go Kinda, like this. You can shake it off a little bit if you like. Right. It's still it's still shaking, isn't it? There you go, and then. Okay. Yeah, you can go up and down with it a little bit. Like Tap that? If you need to. That's a good other way of doing that. Exactly. That's cool. Listen, I have never had luck with chocolate before. Yeah, this it, is It fun. is tricky to dip chocolate. It it's an art. It's really an I've art, isn't it? I've been doing for many years. Okay, so, so do you think that's enough? I or think wait that's a minute. Enough. Okay. Why don't you bring and it on over. over? And just slide it? Yep, you can slide it off if you need to. You can use um, the spatula here. Okay, right there. I'll help you. There okay. All right. That's great. So, and then I would decorate it with yeah. these. Okay, hold on. And how about, if you like, you can decorate however you like. You don't have to follow my design here. Okay. You can make it One. 
couple of statues in a corner or maybe in a row. Three, four, five. Beautiful. About that. And one on the side. One on the side, yeah. And you do the gold thing. I'll do the gold leaf. Okay, you do the gold leaf. Okay, I can hold this. Okay. (laughs) All right. Even though you have... So there is a real art to making this, isn't it? Absolutely. It does take a lot of practice to dip properly. Right. And so these must taste absolutely delicious, right? Of course. Of course. Of course. I can't thank you enough for joining us today. And we have a chef show called The Chef You and I and uh, also Catherine Rigger's World. It's been a pleasure, chef. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. And we're going to go back to to Laura. All right, Laura. Okay. Great. That was that was really Wonder, fun. You had a good time. It was, good. It was. Um, I did one with fondue just recently. Nice. And um, but that is, you could tell the texture of the chocolate is so pure that it's so easy to do, and it just comes off easily. Now I know how to do my fondue. Thank you very You're much. Good. Good. I'm glad it was a win-win there for you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for joining yes. us today on thank you Catherine for the opportunity. Rake, Catherine Raker's World. Would you give your website out, please? Absolutely. Our website at Barry Calbo is www.berry-calibo.com. And thank you so very much. And don't forget to join us on our show every week on Catherine Raker's World or The Chef You and I. Thank you. And let's just talk radio. We'll be back after these messages. Hi, this is Catherine Raker of the Chef You and I and Catherine Raker's World. We are in Mac- the McCormick Center here in Chicago, and we're in the most famous booth of all, Jelly Belly, with the president and CEO of Jelly Belly, Lisa Brasher. I'm so honored to meet you. It's wonderful to be here with you, too. I'm so glad you it's, could make it in and see all the great things here. Oh, you know, I love jelly beans. Absolutely love the beans they are so cool and you're so innovative with your product and how long have you been part of jelly belly well since i was born my uh, great great grandfather started, started the business in 1869 wow. and i'm actually fifth generation Whoa. And we currently have the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh generation working in the business today. Oh, really? I bet you're very excited about that, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Just love it. Well, I love the logo. The logo really represents the product, doesn't it? It does. Yep. And so was that the original logo? This is our original logo with just a few little tweaks made to it, barely. Right. But it's pretty much the same as in the beginning. So when you got into the business, how old were you? I started working in my seventh grade summer out in the packaging department and I would make boxes and label boxes and scrape candy off the floors if anything spilled and basically in our company we work our way up and learn all the different jobs. Do you know I started out in retail at Shillitoe's which was part of Lazarus in the candy department in the basement. (laughs) I'll never forget that as long as I live. So you know I've been around candy a long time. Right. So tell me, what are some of the challenges that you have as a woman entrepreneur? Boy, I, you know, I got to be perfectly honest with you. I really don't have any challenges. I don't I either. Have, I have really never felt held back as a woman. And I've been no. very fortunate to follow in my grandmother's footsteps in our company. And she worked there since uh, 1956 and or maybe 1958 or so. Do and you know, I have never had a problem working with men. Yeah, not a never. problem at all. You know, so I think we're probably pretty good entrepreneurs, aren't we? Very good. You yeah, know, when good. I look out there, I notice candy makers and brokers and manufacturers, and and that's what I see. And you don't see the difference between, you know, men and women because they're all people that work in an industry that they yes. love. Am right. I right? And, and I think we have having, a fun industry. And I think you do. And I think having uh, a family business is really a lot of fun, especially, you know, my my husband loves jelly beans. I mean, after Easter, I had to hide the jelly beans. Oh, boy. <laughs> because if I don't, he'll eat them all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and there's no little kids around, so it's him. 
right. So I have to watch this way. And we make right. over a hundred different flavors, so it's not like you get tired of any certain flavor. No. But if you do, you can switch to another one. You have different packaging now that I that is very innovative. Plus, you've got this gorgeous piece that we're standing yes. behind, yes. which to me is really cool because you can make your own bag with these. Right. That's pretty cool. So when people have their favorite flavors, they go to the stores that have these bins and they can take as much or as little as they like and Love that. really zero in on their favorite flavor. Was that the way your grandfather first started? Right. We were all bulk, 100% bulk. We didn't have any packages at all in the 1970s. When did you go into packaging? So for Jelly Belly, um, we had packaging prior, but for Jelly Belly Jelly Beans, we started out with 20 pound bulk cases. Ooh. Ooh. and only sold individual flavors we didn't even sell assorted wow so uh, then we came out with an eight ounce bag and a four ounce bag and a jar and so wow. that was pretty much we were a bulk company so where do you now what's different about you in the last 10 years oh boy packaging is everything it's really about having a candy store inside a store okay so uh, packaging all the different the boxes and gifting all of that to really set your product apart from other project products is really important so I think so too and I, I see all the packaging that you have and it's really exciting to look at um, and I want to get a picture over there as well because you have everything that I can think of fruit gems what are right. those? Tell me about those. Oh, they're delicious. They're what a, are a they? pectin piece, and they're a soft gel Ooh, with a little sugar sanding on the outside. I love that. It, with natural flavors like orange right. and lemon, and oh, they're delicious. And so what's another one that's, what are bean, what is that? Bean? Bean boozled. What's that? So that is our wild and wacky flavors, very Light-hearted flavors, uh, not for the weary, though. Um, Tell me a little bit about the flavors. So Bean Boozled is actually a game, and there's... It's a game. It's a game, and Ooh. there's 20 different flavors, but only 10 different colors. So when you pick, and this is crazy, I'm but ready. you might pick out a flavor like Juicy Pear, which is a little green bean, and the bean that matches that, that's a wild flavor, is actually Booger. Are you so joking? So until you eat it, you don't know whether it's booger <laughs> oh, or no. a pear. I'm going to do this with my granddaughter. She'll to. love it's it. It's so much fun. So. You know, and I think, I love that. <laughs> I, I, we've got my husband on the floor practically laughing. I think it's so funny. So what else are you doing besides <laughs> being boozled? <laughs> oh, we have a lot of different um, items from Harry Potter, okay. which are amazing. And we've introduced about five new ones at this show. We have the Voldemort's chocolate wand, Ooh. and we are expanding into chocolate products. And we have a new um, chocolate molding machine that you we're have making. a chocolate products. molding machine? We do. We need to come out and see what you do yeah. and how you make it. Because I told you yesterday... I am not a good chocolate maker. Oh. I'm a terrible chocolate maker. Uh oh. You've seen the Lucio Ball? <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, the last show I did was using chocolate in fondue to dip strawberries. Yum. But didn't it work did. out. Well. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> but the best one I have to share this with you is a friend of mine used to make chocolate. She passed away. But anyhow, opera cream. Let me tell you on my set back at uh, our where we film there was chocolate everywhere I mean there was chocolate like in the cabinet to be. it was crazy it was crazy but going into the chocolate world I bet you're excited about that aren't oh, you oh I love it chocolate oh heaven right so yes we have chocolate and some have crisps in them and Ooh. just we're working on some stuff that I can't tell you about right now but you got to watch and wait and we have some really exciting things coming out you know I think that's the most exciting thing about this world uh, of candy and chocolate and whatever confectionery that you can do different things because it's changed so much right since we were little kids right mm -hmm. and now it's a challenge for us to continue to do that would you say that? Oh, I would. I would. You know, some of the products are made with some of the same recipes as long ago, but we'll figure out different ways to, to produce them, maybe to make it a little faster. But there's still that art that comes with candy making that no machine is going to replace. Can it ever do. Yes. Uh, do you remember the first time you watched them make um, a jelly bean? What yeah. was that like? Really wonderful. Right. It's kind of funny. People think that the process is a very quick process where you just like stamp a bean shape out of something and there's your bean. But it could take seven to ten days to make one Jelly Belly Jelly Bean. 
it's quite a process. And is when it you, in a mold? It is actually made in a mold, yes. And we in, uh, inject a hot liquid center that then um, goes into a mold that's a jelly belly shape. Yes. And then we kind of will, we put them into what we call dry rooms overnight where they firm up kind of like if you baked them. Yes. And then they go through a, a steam bath and a sugar shower. Wow. And they got to rest overnight. And Whoa. Yeah, it's like being in a spa, you know? Yeah, it so, does sound like it's in a and spa, then we, isn't it? Yeah, then we put the shell on them by tumbling them in pans and adding layers of sugar and syrups Can to I that. come to the factory and watch sure, you do it? Sure, we'd love to have uh, you We're going to come and do that because, to me, I'll never forget going to my first potato chip factory when Ooh, I was a little yum. kid. And I, But I've never seen jelly beans made before. It's That's quite fascinating. Cool. It's That's very cool. fascinating. I know that our kids are going to love it, and... I can't thank you enough for taking the time out to do this interview with oh, me today. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for coming. And we definitely will come out to California to see you because that's where my grandchildren live, oh, too. Oh, yay. And can you give me your website and where people can buy your products? Sure. Jellybelly.com. Jellybelly.com. Thank you. And thank you so much for, for letting you. me come. Thank Appreciate you. Thanks, and we'll be back after these important messages on Katherine Raker's World and The Chef You and I. Hi, this is Katherine Raker of The Chef You and I and Katherine Raker's World. We have one of the co-owners of Omaha Steakhouse. Just Omaha Steaks, yeah. Just Omaha Steaks. Right. And You've been around since 1917? Right, the Omaha Steaks was founded by my great-great-grandfather in 1917. So we're a fifth-generation family-owned business. So you're in Omaha. We are in Omaha, yep. Tell us a little bit about the company and how you got involved. Your father got involved and you got involved. Is that how it happened? Yeah, so uh, my great-great-grandfather started as a, as a custom butcher okay. in, in Omaha, serving mostly restaurants and grocery stores in the Omaha area. In the 50s, we started to supply the railroads, the passenger really? cars on railroads, and the... That makes sense. Yeah, and the individuals who had Omaha Steaks on the railroads, uh, we weren't called Omaha Steaks then, we were called Table Supply Meat Company, but the individuals who had steaks on the railroads um, would cable back to my grandfather and say, we love that steak we had, can we get some? And so he would start hand-cutting steaks, putting them in, in uh, wax-lined boxes with ice, and shipping them back on the train to the customers. And when my dad graduated from college in 1959 with a degree in philosophy, making him uniquely uh, suited to start a mail order steak company, he decided to see if this shipping steaks around the country thing could work. And so he figured out that we could use styrofoam coolers and that we could use dry ice. And we start to started to build a business advertising nationally and shipping what we were then calling Omaha Steaks nationwide. And they became so popular that in 1965, we actually changed the name of the company from Table Supply Meat Company to Omaha Steaks. That's how it got the original yeah. name. So how did you and your cousin, is it your cousin? Yeah, my cousin. Now run the company, right? That's correct. And tell us exactly what, did your dad retire a while back? Is he still part of it? Yeah, so, um, so there's three brothers in the, uh, in the fourth generation. Um, my uncle Alan is still alive, and uh, my uncle Steve and my father both passed away. My dad passed away about three years ago, and my uncle Steve about ten years ago. So, you know, it was, it's kind of a natural transition uh, into the fifth generation. But we've also been, you know, working really hard in the business for, I've been in the business now for 30 years. 30 years. Yeah, and so, we, and our business, the business has grown, as I said, from being a food service business to really being a direct-to-consumer business. So, um, and that's the... Yeah, and that's the part of the business that I run. And, um, and if you go to omahasteaks.com, we were one of the very first uh, merchants on AOL back in the early 90s. We had one of the first companies to have a website. Being a direct mail company allowed us to ha already have the back end in place and the customer service in place to be able really yeah, to make it work well. I have to tell you that I order and my husband orders all the time. We feel like it's the best Father's Day gift best Christmas gift that you can give. And our kids this year said, and they're in their 50s, okay, so now you know how old I am. Actually, they were so excited to get your package. They were 
They said, Mom, this is the best gift you've ever given us. Well, that's great to hear. And you know, the great thing about uh, Omaha Steaks is that when you give a gift of Omaha Steaks, you're not just giving meat in a box. You're giving a chance for your family and friends to enjoy a great meal together. And that's a chance, especially for moms, to you know, be able to uh, provide food to their kids even though they're far away. And so we're really happy. We feel honored to be able to play in that. In that, that uh, yeah. Well, you know what? The, the, the best thing is that our sons are, are, could be chefs, actually. They're both on the grill all the time. They live in California and Phoenix, Arizona. And so they really enjoy cooking. And so with, your, with the different types of packages that you have, you know, the chicken and, and, and you have pork, right? Right. So we sell a whole variety of, we right. sell steaks, but we also sell lamb, veal, pork, seafood, appetizers, desserts, wow. poultry. We sell things that you can cook on the grill or in a pan. We sell things that you can heat and serve. We have complete meals like skillet meals and crock pot meals. And we've recently introduced, and why we're here, uh, in the uh, at this show, the Sweets and Snacks show, is we've recently introduced um, beef jerky, uh, beef uh, steak bites, and beef sticks. So we've got, we call them high protein meat snacks, and we're working to take those nationwide at grocery stores and convenience stores around the country. Are you going to be in Kroger's? Uh, we're hoping to be in Kroger. Uh, That's we're, my country. Yeah, too. I know. We'd like to, we'd like to be in, uh, in all the big grocers, well, and we up. think we can compete really well. Because of our because our brand is you know is really well known. Well, I hear you're in Jungle Gems. Oh well, we yes, I think we are. Because I do sampling in Jungle Gems. <laughs> and you know, this has become the number one thing. The jerky bites. People really like that, and they're such great appetizers too. Or put them in your car, take them to work. If you're you know like you're if you're a hypoglycemic like me, you take that. It helps give you protein right away and you don't have those highs and lows. Yeah, I have a 12 year old daughter. When I pick her up from school, she loves eating uh, beef jerky. Right. And one of the other things about Omaha Steaks is that, you know, while they, are, they make great gifts, about two thirds of our customers actually buy them for themselves to cook at home. So they be just come part of their, you know, their regular routine. Like, you know, you were telling me, you guys like to buy them for yourselves. And right. you, if you have Omaha Steaks in your freezer, it, they become part of your decision opportunity at four in the afternoon when you're trying to figure out what you want for dinner that day. You can be like, do I want to go out or do I want to throw yeah, some steaks on the grill? I did the other yeah. day. I got to tell you what I did the other day. Well, the doctor told my husband he has to go on a low fat diet, right? So I said, steak is good. There's no fat on this steak. You can have half of this steak. He couldn't believe me and he tasted it and he went, oh my goodness, this is great. Oh, you absolutely can. In fact, we recommend uh, for people who want a low fat diet to have like a four ounce portion of lean beef. We sell a four ounce filet mignon that's actually perfect for that or even a right? top sirloin steak. Uh, we sell great seasonings to go with them to make that you know taste extra good to really bring out the flavor. Right. Um, so there's lots of different opportunities uh, to enjoy what, low fat that's what beef. We try to do with our chef you and I show is teach people how to cook one and healthy cooking. And we've been on the air now almost 10 years and now we're all in 88 countries, so people see us everywhere. Well, that's great. You know, I think one of the things that I've learned is that the way you can like make your cooking more healthy is to make little tweaks to it. Like, you know, don't you don't have to saute a steak in butter as delicious as it tastes. You can also just, you know, you can grill the steak on your grill and then you're not adding any extra fat to it. Well, see, so I'm there's lots of ways to do that. There's a lot of ways to do it. I mean, I use everything from lemon pepper uh -huh. to all kinds of different things to make it tasty because I'm allergic to garlic. Ah, uh, right, you mentioned that. And yeah. when you're allergic to garlic, you can't put that on there in a lot of the different sauces and everything that's out there if you have garlic. It's so true. So had to become very creative. Not that I don't cook with, for it with other people, but you know, you could do with your other products, you could do a fondue. Right. Which I did last Right, week. right, you could do that with like our tenderloin tips yes. or our beef tips would make an awesome fondue, yeah, maybe, yep. You know, they now have these new electric fondues that everybody's it's rave right now. And it's just a lot of fun for people to try something different. All right, you know, what's really exciting is meeting you and seeing that we're not leaving beef, we're not leaving meat. And I don't want any of the dairy farmers to go away, right? No. It's really healthy for you. I just can't be a vegetarian. I'm sorry. Well, so I'm not a nutritionist, um, but I know what works for my family. 
And I can tell you that you know, what we like to do is eat a variety of lean proteins. We like to get a balance of vegetables and fruits and grains in our diet. Um, and we like to do everything in moderation. That's right. So you, know, you, can, you can enjoy a steak without eating a 35 ounce steak. You can enjoy, you know, a, you can enjoy a chicken without eating a whole chicken. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can eat lobster without having to dip it in butter. I mean, there's all sorts of things you can do to, to enjoy a variety of, uh, of different foods without, uh, you know, doing it, without overdoing it, I guess would be the right word. I can't thank you enough for joining us today on The Chef You and I. I hope you'll come back. I absolutely will. We can, we can talk from Omaha. We can, we can do that split screen thing. Technology can get us there. Yeah. All right, thank you so, thank much. You so it's much. been an honor. Great. Would you give your website again? Sure, the website is omahasteaks.com. You can also call our 800 number. That's 800-228-9055. Uh, we're open 24 hours a day, so we'd love, uh, love you to give us a try. And thank you so much for joining us on Catherine Raker's show. Hi, this is Katherine Raker of Katherine Raker's World and The Chef You and I. And I'm at the McCormick Center here in Chicago at the Sweets and Snacks Show. And I'm with Trevin Morton of Feeney, the American Marketplace, right? Correct, yes. Correct. Now, US tell, market. now, you know, I used to live in Madrid. Oh. Okay. And I loved Spanish products. So you got to bring that mic up there, buddy, so we can hear you, right? Tell me how long you've been with Feeney. Sure, I joined Feeney uh, here in the top of the year. So top started of the year, 29 first of the year. January. Yes, yeah, so we've brought in a new U.S. leadership team. Right. Uh, ready to build this brand with U.S. consumers here in the marketplace. Oh, I am so excited because, you know, I love Spanish companies. I love international companies because they really think forward. Sure, yes. And I love this piece right here that a photographer or a videographer can get. That is absolutely gorgeous. No, thank you for mentioning that. So... Feeney is, is known for, it's a very family-focused company that's known for creating vibrant flavors and sounds, but also right. we want to pay homage to the local uh, host here in Chicago. So this is a right. very much a landmark in Chicago, so we want to make sure we pay tribute to the host. So I partner with these candy artists here to, to bring together a replica of the city to you know showcase the Feeney product, right. but also, again, pay homage. Right. You know, they have so many different flavors. Let's talk a little bit about your product sure. if you don't mind yes. so tell us where they started with Feeney so there's people I know who Feeney is yeah but perfect my listeners and my viewers want to know all about them yeah no Go Feeney ahead. is a very family focused and family run company they've been in the marketplace for the last 50 years 50 years started in 1971 wow yeah it was 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 started from a very entrepreneurial couple um, and actually Feeney actually comes from the nickname of the founder's wife oh wow that is her name yeah so again very the, the company is very much uh, stimulate this tutorial, but making sure that we're um, very creative, uh, being inspirational, um, and it's all about the imaginative. And wow. that's what we're displaying here today. It's all about the imaginative, but also stimulating the senses. And so when you think of our products, they're not only of highest quality, but they're made with things that are from um, all, all natural to gluten-free to fat-free, made with real fruit. And so we have something, we think, for the whole household here. Well. Wow. You know, I'm so excited about your product. Can I pick one? Yeah, no, go for it. Okay. Uh, again, this is our relaunch Hoopla's line. Okay. And so this is what we call two-in-one licorice fun. And so this I'm product is... I'm a licorice is, fan. Yeah, no, as you have consumers, I mean, Feeney has been a pioneer in a lot of things. And right. so what's not on the table here is, is in that case is where we have a gluten-free licorice. There's the only place in the world that you'll see a gluten-free licorice. That's not only gluten-free, but it's fat-free. Uh, zero percent fat. How many calories? Uh, that's a great question. Not many calories at all. Not that's many calories important at all. to a lot of people that are really licorice fans like me. Yeah, and what's what's the beauty about it is if you love strawberries, you get the sensorial right there with the fresh strawberry taste in the product in You're itself. You're making me hungry. <laughs> Hello. Well, you have to try some have before to you try, leave. Yes. I have to definitely try it. Um, actually, when I go to the movies. 
I love licorice. So movies for that in particular, so what we have that we've launched here at the Sweets and Snacks show is, is what we call Flip It. So this is our newest innovation within packaging. So Let's you put have it right here. Yeah, so you have consumers who are always making a choice between, you know, I either want sweet or other want swar. Well, now you don't have to choose. So with Flip It, you have two-in-one fun. So two products in one. So if you look at so this bag. Can I go in yes, here? Yes, go inside. So you have a sweet product on one side. But also, people don't want to blend products, so you have a sour product on the other side. Can I try this? Go for it. What do you think? <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's a first of its kind. Again, packaging innovation is something that no one in the marketplace to have. Two products within one bag, with inside one product, that they're not oh. touching each other. So. so now, what is this other product that? So you tried the uh, the sweet product, the fruit attack. Or, I'm sorry, you tried the citrus attack. Mm -hmm. The other one is the sweet product, which is the fruit attack. Again, candy fruit, so you'll get anywhere from watermelon flavors to peach flavors, a variety of different flavors in here. Oh, it's absolutely delicious. Thank you. And? Again, we, we do a lot of different crazy things. So a staple within the candy industry is gummy bears, for example. Well, when do you see a 3D bear? A 3D a, bear? 3D bear that's gluten-free, fat-free, and made with real fruit. Maybe we'll oh fruit goodness. products, things like black currant, which is... Uh, oh, my gosh, look at that. Yes, is it's that very cute? cute and adorable, but it's just as good as in your mouth that it is to look at as well. I'm tasting the fruit flavor. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Really good. Really good. Thank you. And I love this because with kids... Yes. I work a lot with kids. Yes. Again, the... Everyone I've encountered has uh, a great satisfaction with not only eating the product, but again, the, the sensorial that I just displayed earlier. You, you know, you only get the sensation of, of real product when you come to the Phoenix Suite. So we're offering something that the U.S. consumer hasn't seen before. So we're very excited to be here in the U.S. and very excited for all the consumers to These partake in this product. These gummy bears are the cutest thing I've ever seen. You know what I automatically think about? Cupcakes. Cupcakes? Okay. To use them um, for a children's bear party. Okay. Okay? Okay. And to put them on in li as little gifts. You okay. can do a whole bunch of different things with this. I agree. I agree. I, I am like a child <laughs> as far as product. Okay. I think this is, uh, you have to see this. Do you see this on camera? This is so cute. Have you done anything with the bears a yet? 3D bears. I, the bears are just so fun. Do you do, uh, what else, what other little... Um, toys or this kind yeah, of Yeah, so toy. let me uh, show you something else. So, cinnamon mix. How fun is it for a kid to have a product like a strange fruit finger or a berry a what? bone? Finger? Strange fruit finger, exactly. Or gummy side up egg. <gasps> this show is me, very me. much Can a kid product for sure. Let me open this up. Okay, why don't I do that? Why don't you do that? You're as excited as I am about I this. I am, yes. No, this is something that. The U.S. market has not seen before. So that, that uh, is a strange fruit finger. How fun what? is that? Strange fruit finger. Look at that. That is wild. For Halloween? Oh, my god. For gosh. any. So you think about Look movie time with your, with your family. That's a yes. perfect snack for movie time. Do you know what? This is so cute. Yes. I mean, kids, I mean, I can understand why, you know, maybe some kids don't like eggs. Yeah, this gives you a fun way to enjoy a product, and it's not a—it's more of a citrusy flavor, so it's yeah. not—it's not an egg so taste. So, what does it taste like? Go, show, try it. Tell me what you think. A little vanilla in there. Oh my goodness, this is delicious. Thank you, thank See, the you. The nice thing is you can suck on it for a little while. Yeah, you, you don't you have to. Into yeah, it. it doesn't it doesn't require you to, to you can savor the flavor again. But I can see all the kind of fun things we can do for a birthday party too. Exactly. Again. The brand is all about fun. It, like we say, if it's fun, it's Feeny. It that's is. that's what we live by. That's the model of the brand. Well, I can understand why you love working for them. I do. I'm having the thrill of my career. I've worked in a few product spaces, and this this is by far the funnest brand I've been a part of. Can I ask you, are you married and have children? I do, yes. Both. How old are your kids? Uh, 13 and 10. Oh, so what do they think? They're big fans. So uh, I spent some time in a, in a cheese world, and my daughter was a big disappointment. Now she loves me again as a result of the candy she's very much in tune with my son is loves the gummy so you have the shock tongues there so he's very much into super sour products and uh, so we have the, the something for every taste bud there my daughter per se she likes more of the citrusy candies and so i'd have that again when you have sweet and sour 
they don't have to choose anymore. So they're very satisfied and with I've this product. I've done both those yes. kind of products, you know, the sweet and the sour products. And how many calories? Only 100 calories? Only 100 calories. Uh, it's only a handful. So you have a serving size is about four pieces. So very. You can control that. You can that, control that. This is 115 are they calories. Eventually, are they in a one ounce package at all? So they're in, um, some of the products are available in a two and a half ounce product. That's so good. So that you can find at the checkout counter for sure. That's good. That's awesome. Yes. Um, I'm so excited about meeting you and seeing your product and all the different things. Now tell me what this is. So these are sour tornadoes. So what this is, is a licorice filled with a sour filling. And so we have three different offerings. So there's two here displayed. So you have a very berry tornado. Mm -hmm. And then you have a fizzy tornado So for the extreme sour. So these products in itself were developed co-developed with a panel of teenagers with here in the United States. And really? so we took a collaboration, we took all their input, and we provided some products that they actually wanted that they didn't see today in the marketplace. Wow. That's a great focus group to be able to work with because they really control the market. They do. They are very big users of the candy. But again, Feeny is, again, is a, is a family-run company, family-owned. And so there's something for everyone. So again, you have the sweet and sour, the fun one. You have something that, you know, probably caters to mom one. But what's most important for is, is making sure mom feels good about what she's giving her kids. So, again, when you have products that are gluten-free, 0% fat, you know, when you give your kid and a treat. Small, you know, let's look at the sugars. How many sugars are in there? So, there's 9% uh, of sugars That's in there. nothing. It's nothing at all. That's so really good. Very on the so small anyhow. side, again. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about all of. I mean, you have so much. But it's so also much. sugar from real fruit, so that's a little that's difference a difference. as well. So yeah, that's, that's the big really difference. Really different. So today you have your artists. They did this yesterday. They they this process together overall. You know, we we collaborate over a month's time in terms of actual production. It's probably a two week project for them. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. It's so a week what project. are they making? We want to go over and talk to them and meet them yeah, too. Yeah, let's see what's going on today okay. with them. So let's um, so give your website out. Sure, FeenySweetsUSA.com. And so you're are you distributing now in all the stores? Or are you beginning to? Yes. Yeah, so we have select retail outlets that carry our product today, and distribution is growing by the day. That's great. Yes. Well, you need to be in Jungle Dims. You need to be in Kroger. So where you can find us today in terms of a national presence, we have products in 7-Eleven. So any consumers today can find one of our tornadoes one of your within 7-Eleven. That's yes. great. So let's go over and meet the artists. And who are they? Yeah, so this is Jim and Marie Pelton. Jim and Marie. Yeah, right. so. You're, you're married? Okay, so let's, come up, let's go over there and talk. Perfect. We're back on Catherine Raker's World and the chef, you and I, and Trevin. Morton, you, yes. Trevin. I was going to just use your first name. Oh, Is that sorry. All right? no. That's all right. Trevin Morton, would you please introduce the candy artist to us? Yes. No. Uh, Feeny Sweets has partnered with Jim Victor and Marie Pelton here to, again, pay homage to the city of Chicago. They're also on display here from 1233, creating other art with the Feeny candy as well. Oh, let me tell you, you guys are my favorite people in the world because I love candy art. Thank so, you. So tell me Thank a you. little bit. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about how you started as artist and can we see you do something uh, because you did that whole thing and that was like a month's worth you right. need to get that up there right, right there okay. okay okay and you are i'm jim victor jim <laughs> marie pelton yeah. and um how long have you been artist well i have been an artist basically for the last 20 years okay and uh, really doing sculpture, sculptural work. And, right. uh, but I love working with color, you know, because my roots are sort of with painting. Oh, and yes. so when I get a chance to work with color, I'm just delighted. And so working with the candy is great. Right. So when did you start working with candy? Uh, candy. Let's see. Well, I, I guess chocolate is candy, isn't it? Right. So I started, that was my first food sculpture job. Wow. Was chocolate. Right. And fun, huh? Fun. Now, you know, let's, I'm going to walk over here a little bit because I want, I want the camera guy to see this piece of art that you did. Right. It took you actually a month to think about, to yeah. create. Oh, yeah. And then two weeks, two weeks to actually create. Right. Correct? That's correct. How many hours do oh, you think God. you put in there? I mean, I, when I get involved in art, I don't even know what time it is. Yeah, right? well, that's, that's what happens exactly. It's just. Right. 
you can't stop. Long hours. Yeah, very once long we started hours. with the candy part of it, um, I would say long, like 12 hour days. Right. For sure, and that's with many other people working with us. We hired uh, right. some artists, other artists to work with us on yeah. this project. Yeah. I can see that you'd have to in order to get it done in time, correct? So yes. you're now working with two pieces that you're going to do today. Right. One is a robot. One that's is a, a robot. robot. That's right. right. And then that's a car. A vehicle. Yes. A vehicle. Right. Exactly. So what's the first? I watched you do your wiring and your gluing. Right. And you cut all the pieces out ahead of time and, and actually uh, drilled holes in it. Mm -hmm. So tell me what you're going to do with this piece right here. What's the first thing you're going to do now? Well, the next p thing I'm going to do is add arms. So I want to add that and then get the proportion of the arms right. But then after that, um, it has a little bit of flexibility in the armature, you know, with the I wire. I want to turn it. Can I turn it around? Sure, for you our, can. Yeah. yeah so so you the can flexibility comes in the form of like the wire. And I want to get his posture right because right now he's kind of like leaning backwards. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, He's going to fall over. Yeah. So, but I want to further stabilize, you know, his position and his posture using some thicker candy down at the bottom. Right. So that's also going to give him some structure. It's going to add right. to it. And then I'm just basically going to work my way from the bottom to the top. Um, wow. You know, doing doing everything. So. And talk about your car now. Right. Okay. Right. Can I show that? Can Absolutely. You see that? Okay. He's coming over to look yeah. at it. Here, give it to me, and I'll yeah. hold it. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, I will just do the same thing. I'll start at the bottom. I'll probably put some shock tongues on there, you know, some green shock tongues. It'll kind of look like a, like a lawn, like it's on a lawn. Right. And then I'll probably be looking for some wheels for this car. i got to get cool right. wheels. Right. And, of course, Feeney has so many cool round shapes. I'm going to be able to find some really fun shapes to work with. Well, I might have a couple uh, watermelons or four watermelons for oh, wheels. Wow, I don't know. Wow, that's really <laughs> cool. I mean, anything that you can do to really excite kids or excite people. Um, I want to ask one of our producers, Lawrence, could you have Lawrence bring the tree over if you don't mind? I want people to see the tree. Bill's going to get it, My the other videographer. I want people to see your work. Right. Now, how long did it take you to do that? That was yesterday, and that was a that was a three-hour sculpture Process. right there. Oh, right. That's right. gorgeous. Right. Thank you. And yeah. then there's another piece. Can you get? No, don't get the other. We'll take a picture of it. But how long did it take you to do the form to start with, and how did you start? Uh, that is started with just a wire form, and right. uh, that I kept adding to and adding more pieces to. And then I drilled a hole into the wood base right. and put it in there and got it firmly attached there and glued into it. Right. And then I started to add all the pieces onto right. it. Right. You know, it, people don't understand there's a base for everything. Oh, yeah. I mean, so, and that's the cool thing is, is trying to get the structure together so it doesn't fall apart. Yes. Right? And also, so it, you're getting your basic form has to be w where you want to go with it. Right. Because you can't change it once you start putting candy, you can't right. change the movement, the way it right. feels. Right. So. And that is so beautiful, the leaves and everything. And so what are, you know, the different types of candy, they do have really cool candy, don't they? Yeah, they do. I they mean, do. And I mean, I would do that for a party in a minute. Yeah. Right? Yeah. For yeah. kids' yeah, party. Right. Yeah. You know, what I love about kids is that they're very creative. If you give them a form... They can come up with everything. Absolutely. And I can even think of doing a clock, a kid's clock, mm -hmm. with this candy. What do you think? Oh, it's a great idea. Great yep, idea? Yep, yep. I used to work with a guy called Kids Time, a doctor, and I never thought about using candy. That's a great idea. It is. Right? Absolutely, yeah. And they would really enjoy doing something like that because kids are extremely creative. Do you have mm -hmm. children? Yes. I, I have, yeah, two sons, and, of course, they're not children anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. But do they like what you guys do? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, they used to do it sometimes with me. Wow, they used to help wow. when they were younger. Well, I want to thank you so much for being on our show today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Where can people um, get more more about you as oh, well as the product? We have a website, uh, jimvictormariepelton.com, okay. and we're also on Instagram and Facebook, and it's JVMP Food Sculpt on Instagram. All right, and then I think there's is finney.com or something like that, right? Oh, finney.com, yeah, right. absolutely. Finney.com, you have to really try the product because it's really good. It is. And we'll see you next time on Catherine Raker's World. Okay. And the chef, you and I.
We'll see you soon. Don't forget to go to our website, KatherineRakersWorld.com, and also TheChefHealAndI.com. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us on The Chef You and I Show today. We'll be back next week with another great and healthy recipe. Don't forget to visit our website, TheChefYouAndI.com, for all of our featured recipes, cooking tips, and clips of the show.